we discussed the Bohr's theory of hydrogen spectra or hydrogen atom and we also found that the energy for the different values of n e n is equal to minus of m z square e4 divided by 8 epsilon naught square h square 1 by n square where n is an integer goes to 1 to for different values of n we calculated e1 e2 e3 and technically this n is called as principal quantum number quantum number we also found that for the first n equal to 1 for the first orbital the ionization energy potential is actually e1 which is minus 13.6 eb then e2 is minus 3.39 e3 is equal to minus 1.51 e these are all in evs and dash and up to e infinity we call it as zero because the electron at that time is free to move for n is equal to one we have z for n equal to one let's see z equal to 1 we got that the energy e1 is called as ry which is equal to m e4 six it was one red bug actually it's called one red bug what does this signify this signify that if we want to remove an electron from the n equal to one shell or one orbit then the energy required for that will be at least minimum of 13.6 eV which is the ground state energy of the atom it's also called as binding energy or the ionization energy yeah. so this is what we have done in the last lecture actually and uh, today uh, we will modify these results and calculate some more new results from them we will define it term value term value is actually a term which is used for representing the spectrum hydrogen spectrum and term value is nothing actually it is the value energy value term value is actually an energy value of various quantum states or energy levels so it is a energy value of various quantum states or which are called as energy levels and they are then divided by minus hc what does that mean that tn is a term value for a particular energy level of en my hc if you use this value for the above equation for this here then we will see that tn is equal to this plus mz square e4 divided by 8 epsilon naught square c n is 1 2 3 then you can define this quantity m e4 divided by 8 epsilon naught square s cube c it is a red bar constant which we have already done and it is denoted by infinity why their infinity is there infinity is for infinitely heavy nuclei 
so it is for infinitely heavy nucleus if it is for hydrogen suppose z equal to 1 then this r infinity beta it has been this is a constant actually except this z so except z this this whole term this except z so it is a constant actually E4. So this whole term is a constant. If you see M mass of electron is constant, charge of electron is constant, then epsilon H C. So this constant is actually a Radberg constant. We have already represented it in before in the before in the last lecture. Here I have write it actually infinity. Infinity is the reason that when we consider the atoms of heavier masses, that means when Z is large. So when Z increases, the R also increases because then for higher atoms, it becomes R infinity. And this R infinity is constant for all atoms. So when Z equal to one for the case of hydrogen atom, this R infinity becomes R H simply. And if you put Z equal to two, that is helium. So it becomes R H E. So it almost remains constant for all atoms. So if you see this Tn, the term value Tn is equal to, I can write R infinity Z square by N square from this equation. So this is R infinity Z square by this N square here. So here you can see that you can conclude uh, the lowest and the most stable energy, lowest and the most stable energy level has the largest term value. That is n is small, tn is large. Inversely proportional. That is what this statement means actually lowest and the most stable energy as we are going to the decreasing end this term tn is large tn increases now what is the origin of the hydrogen spectra or hydrogen like atomic spectra origin of one electron spe atomic spectra Origin of one electron spectra or hydrogen like atomic spectra. Hydrogen like atomic spectra. Origin. Now we will first go through from the above equations. So you from the above we can write En is equal to if you see that uh, in terms of red bar constant it is minus r infinity hc this is simply this equation uh, yes here yeah. this if you write from this equation en is minus so not this one sorry from this equation yeah here it's minus mz square e square minus a r infinity z square in terms of if we write it in terms of r infinity because it has a h cube c so we can write it as this hmm. so in terms of r infinity we can write the energy values like this suppose that we have an atom and some electromagnetic radiation is incident upon this atom. Let us suppose that the electromagnetic radiation have a frequency nu dash and when an atom absorbs some frequency it emits the photons having some frequency let that frequency of emitted photon is nu dash. This is the emitted photon.
is the emitted frequency. And I already told you that it is according to Bohr's energy quantization divided by H. This we have already written. So if I put up the values in this equation, EI put N equal to one, N equal to this, N becomes NI. So for EI, we have NI, for EF, we have NF. That means when we are in nth state, ith state, where the energy is the EI. When we are in F state, final state, the energy will be EF. If you write this equation in the, uh, here, you can find that nu dash is equal to R infinity Z square, there is C, then there is this H and this H will cancel out. We are left with NF square minus NI square. Because of this minus, these, are, these have been interchanged because of this minus. Or I can write it as new dash by C, C this C here. So new dash by C is equal to R infinity Z square. It is one by n f square minus one by n i square. We also know that if you see that uh, c is equal to nu by lambda. Okay, uh, for this case it is nu dash by lambda. I can also write that or nu dash by c is one by lambda. Lambda. Yes. All lambda. right. No, nu is equal to c by lambda. C by lambda. We have something done wrong here. So nu dash by c. c. Sorry. Yes. So we can write it as. Nu dash equal to c by lambda. Nu dash is equal to yes, c by lambda. This is it. And yes. we can write nu dash by c is 1 by lambda. But this one by lambda is written as new bar. In some books, it is simply new, actually. This is the wave number. It's inverse of wavelength. And we can write here this equation. New bar, or I can write new dash or new bar. Let us suppose it's new bar. I will write it as new bar. It is wave number of the emitted frequency, not the absorbed one or the instant one. It is what is emitted after the absorption. So new bar is one by lambda, which is R infinity z square 1 by n f square minus 1 by n i square. So this is what you have seen earlier uh, when we discussed earlier uh, this theories of uh, Balmer series when Balmer proposed that hydrogen spectra theoretically. And this has been verified by using the Bohr's theory. Now, what is the origin? If we see this equation, we can get an idea what how does the hydrogen spectra or the hydrogen-like atomic spectra arise. So if we suppose that uh, the normal state of an atom is the state in which the electron has the lowest energy, that is a stable state for n equal to one. So for hydrogen-like atom, for hydrogen-like atoms, normal state or stable state, what we call. State is one for which uh, the electron has the lowest energy. Lowest energy. Lowest means negatively lowest actually here, that is n equal to one, which is minus a 13.6. So, when an atom receives energy from outside, receives energy means we incident some photons on that, and it uh, are. Sir, repeat. So, is this okay? This statement. Sir, repeat. Okay, okay. Is this okay? This statement. Sir, statement. फिर से बोली. Like I am saying that. फिर से बोली statement. Okay, okay. The normal state or the stable state of an atom is which in which it has the lowest energy. Okay, as you move 
that means lowest energy means the electron has the lowest energy the atom hole so because everything is in its stable orbit we are not giving any external energy whatever the energy atom has that has the lowest energy at that time so that is its normal state or the stable state whenever you excite that atom whenever you give some external energy to that atom it absorbs gains more energy it becomes greater than what it has earlier and it does not remain a normal or a stable one so it can go to any higher energy state but when atom is in its lowest energy state the lowest energy state corresponds to when it is stable it don't have any external disturbances and that corresponds to the lowest n equal to 1 for an hydrogen like it now if atom receives an energy from outside by some means for example uh, we have an atomic gas here we have atomic gas in some sealed quartz tube or glass we pass an electric discharge so there may be an ionization this is one of the sources of external energy photon that is another source this may be one of the sources for example in this case the net result is that an hydrogen atom which was in its lowest state in shelly now gets some external energy so if we ionize the gases there is a kinetic energy of those ions and electrons because of this electric discharge and that kinetic energy gives it the excess energy extern extra energy and what will it do it will collide with an another atom for example we have an atom we have an electron here we have an electron here if it is a one electron atom so this will move then we have only one electron so when we have one electron only and it gains some another other energy by coming another electron will come and collide with this so this atom will gain more energy absorbing photon is not the only source of external energy but there may be more we can have this type of energy source as well so it gains some extra energy from this collision when it gains some energy from collision it will make a transition to a state of higher energy because we are exciting this electron and it may go to some for example here in this state here so it moves to this state because of absorbing the energy extra energy that is n greater than 1 it is not necessary that it will go n equal to 2 not necessary it may go n equal to 4 depending upon what how much is the energy which we are giving to it so it will depend on that magnitude so it can go n equal to 6 energy quant uh okay uh, i am giving that energy maybe we can give energy to the atom in different ways one of the ways is you shine some light on it and it absorbs a photon and it excites an electron to the another energy level okay this is one source another source is which i am giving the yes, example sir. here of which the example i am giving here maybe that we have an atomic gases we have a large number of atoms we pass through some electric discharge electric current in this gas what will it do it will ionize so once it will ionize yes, the gas the ions and the electrons they will move with the more speeds more velocities because they are gaining now the energy yes from sir from the external field so when we, they are moving with some these higher energies higher external energy they will collide with another atom during collision they may lose some part yes, of its sir. energy and that energy which is lost by one atom which is colliding with the other can be gained by the other atom if we have one atom this is one atom here the electron is it excites it collides with this so when it collides with this so that means some part of energy from a colliding atom is gained by the another atom and in that atom which is absorbing the radiation will move to some make a transition from lower energy state to some higher energy state which may be n is greater than 1 so it can go to n is equal to 2 n is equal to 3 n is equal to 4 and it depends upon how much is the energy which is imparted to that atom during collision so magnitude it depends on that magnitude and once it goes to its high energy state it has a tendency to because it will like to remain stable this has an excited i have already told in the first lecture that the excited state is very short which is 10 is power minus 13 seconds 
and the common tendency is that it will try to remain at its ground state. So when it will try to remain at its ground state, then it will make it transition back to its initial energy state, to the ground state. Now, here is a point to understand. If, for example, we have n equal to 1, we have somewhere equal to n equal to 2, we have n equal to 3, we have here n equal to 4, 5, 6, 7, here this is n equal to infinity. Continue here. So, now, for example, initially it was in this state, it attains that some extra part of energy and goes to the, this n equal to 2. While well, coming back, it will come directly to this. There's no any other energy level in between two and one, but this is one possibility. There may be another possibility, which is like, if we have a transition, it goes like this. It absorbs energy, which is equal to the gap this much. It absorbs the energy, which is this much of amount. For example, it goes to n equal to seven, or n equal to six, n equal to four, initially. It absorbs energy and reaches to a state where n is equal to seven, suppose that. So when it goes to that state, it drops successively through the states So it can break or yes sir. There's some issue in the network. No, sir. Okay, okay. There may be some network issues with anyone. It can be with me also as well. But I will try to make it stable. Don't worry. Okay. So for example, if it goes to n equal to seven then it has to come back to the ground state. But while coming back to the ground state, there are another, another energy levels here. There is this energy level, there is this energy gap, this, this, this. So there is possibility of the transition from one to another level, depending upon the selection rules. Uh, which one is possible, which one is not possible. So suppose we assume those transitions and these all are possible. What we are saying that these transitions are, these are possible. We are assuming that. And if it comes back to some state, while reaching to n equal, because it is going from n equal to one to n equal to seven. Now, while coming back from seven, it will go to first, sorry, to n equal to four then our ni is equal to seven and nf is equal to four, for example. And when from nf, now our ni will become four and it goes to nf equal to three. Again, our ni will be equal to three and nf will be equal to one. These are the series of transitions which it can make while coming back from n equal to seven to n equal to one. And we will, one. Yeah, we will get a series of lines in this spectrum then. And I will draw those lines here, if it is possible. Let me see. Oh, that one, two. Here are the other liners. Here, but n is equal to infinity. No, there's a series of transitions, and we can calculate the wave number of those transition liners by using that above equation new equal to r infinity z square one by nf minus one by ni and for hydrogen 
we know that our infant is this. So we can have a series of transitions from an F is equal to seven. So there is first initially a transition, which is coming like this. Then it can make a transition. This may be a possibility. Then it can go up to We can have a transition from this as well. We can have a transition from this four to seven. Then we can have from three. So there is a set of line series of lines which will reach to the ground. So there it will go from seven to five. It can go from seven to four, then three, then one. So the set of series is obtained and We can calculate nu equal to one by lambda, which is our infinity for heavier atoms, and our infinity is equal to our h for z equal to one, which is for hydrogen atom. So according to Bohr model, we know that what is our infinity is, and our infinity is approximately equal to 1.09737, which we have already So there are, there may be a set of transitions in which an electron drops to a certain final state and F. Okay, I will send you this diagram again. Don't worry about that. So anybody who wish to draw it, I can send you. Don't worry about that. This is a set of those Lyman series, Balmer series and Poisson series. And I will give the index how we can draw this diagram. So there may be a set of transitions in which an electron drops to a certain final state like n equal to one. So it goes to n equal to seven from seven to one. There are different set of transitions between that one and seven. And finally, it comes to a final ground, initial final state and f. For example, if there's a transition from any state two, three, four, and it comes back to the ground state when we have a final state nf equal to one, then and i will be two, three, four, there's dash. This will give rise to Lyman series. So it reaches to ground state n1 from two, from three, from four, five, six, there will be set of series of Lyman's. And each series has an end limit, series limit that we will discuss again in a bit. We have already discussed that yesterday. So when this case arises, this is a Lyman series. When Balmer series. It gives us a Balmer series. It gives us person series. And F is four and I is equal to five, six, seven. This gives us bracket series. And then F is five and I is six, seven, eight. This gives us P prime series. So these are the different series which arise uh, according to Bohr's theory. This is, this is actually drawn in the energy level diagram, which I will send you again. And the transitions are represented by arrows in this energy level diagram. 
बतूला आपकी आवाज आ रही है बैकग्राउंड में प्लीज टर्न ऑफ योर माइक और राइट अ मैसेज So we write the transition is represented by the arrow, and the magnitude of the arrow, length. Sorry, the length of the arrow is proportional to proportional, not equal to proportional to the energy between those two energy levels, energy difference between the two levels, and it depends. It represents the magnitude of that energy, which is equal proportional to the length of the arrow, and there are different series. Then, yes, here it is. See now. So this is n equal to one here. I cannot write here. There is some problem with it. This n equal to one. Here it is. If you see now, there is n equal to two. Here minus three point four zero. This is the Lyman series. L y actually Lyman alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. These are the various transitions to from five to one, then four to one, three to one, two to one. No, of course, no transition from one to one. There's no thing such, nothing like that. Similarly, for Balmer series, if you see that for n equal to two, it becomes the final state. This uh, final state uh, there here, this becomes the final, and this is the range actually. Here it is the energy. This uh, wave number range. Okay. And uh, yes, sir. And this is the uh, H alpha Balmer series, H beta, H gamma, and similarly Poisson bracket. And when you go towards The right, there will be a P fund series as well. This is how the energy level diagram is drawn actually. And now, this Bohr's theory was actually has a great success uh, in explaining the Balmer series. And uh, this success was that such so that it also explained the origin of those Poisson bracket P fund. Series as as well as Lyman bracket and Pfund series, because they were not discovered, they were not explained at the time when the Bohr's theory was developed. Those Lyman uh, bracket Pfund series, they had not been discovered at the time the theory was developed by Bohr, and these series were predicted by Bohr's theory, and observed experimentally. They were observed experimentally in 1916. Accordingly, in 1916, these were like. Lyman series was discovered, observed uh, experimentally. Lyman series. In 1922, we have bracket series. 1924, it gives the P fund series. Actually, these were earlier predicted, before Bohr's theory was not there. So it was they were predicted actually at that time. This is all how the spectral origin, the line spectra of the hydrogen atom was explained. From Bohr's theory. Now, we up to now we saw that there are some there are mostly quantized energy levels and the spectra use those energy levels in terms of the spectral line spectra. There is an a discrete spectra as well, but there is a continuous band is also observed, and this continuous band is observed at the series limit. I already told you that when we move, when we draw the series, like here, these go close actually. Similarly, we have another series. So these are very close. So there is a series limit to each series, like Lyman series, Balmer series. This is a series limit, and it behaves as a continuous spectra. There may be there is a separation, of course, between the lines, but it is too small to be observed. Uh, normally, by normal instruments or by naked eyes, and it has been said that this is a continuous band is observed, which starts at the series limit, and it goes to few small little distance to higher wave number new, because as we go new increases in this in this direction, so extending to few. Uh, this distance to higher view new new bar not new it's new bar wave number or shorter wave length uh, it is said that this spectra this continuous spectra at the series end it arises uh, due to unquantized orbits those orbits are not actually circular they are hyperbolic so we have an 
atom this is sir, a fir se boliye ye what i am saying is that there is a continuous band at the end of each series up to now these are separate lines these these are discrete lines these are quantized actually but what is observed is that at the end of each limit like uh, series like lyman series balmer series poisson series each has a series limit okay and where from we cannot distinguish between the lines those are termed as continuous lines continuous spectrum and it is said that these ob these arise because there are some orbits which are not quantized which are not quantized and electron moves in hyperbolic orbits like this hyperbolic actually this sorry i may have drawn it roughly but this is a three dimensional actually picture so we can have hyperbolic orbit like this we can have this this and these are continuous hyperbolic orbits this and these are continuous these are not quantized so because of this nature of these orbits there is a spectra which is also continuous because we have seen that uh, spectra and the nature of the energy levels they are interrelated with each other what is the difference between the two energy levels we will get a difference between the two lines in the emission of the absorption spectra and from classical electrodynamics uh, it is also uh, observed that electron which is moving about a nucleus which is moving about a nucleus in a hyperbolic orbit it has a positive energy and these are all unquantized orbits that means for these hyperbolic orbits all possible values of energy are possible we can have a, because they are continuously spread in the space with respect to a nucleus and we have unquantized energy levels or unquantized spectra and this arises at the series limit end of each series and i think we have yes we have something more we can have we have seen that if there is a for example we can have how the absorption spectra arises there is some energy h nu and it is equal to the difference between these two levels and it is absorbed and that means absorption means there is a transition from this to this and if it comes back it is it may be directly emitted without any loss when nu dash is nu that means we don't have any energy loss and this is a the same frequency this is of the same frequency but in some cases when the transitions can go from this to this then if we don't have this exact energy emission for example it goes to any greater than 1 then it may come and drop to this energy level we may have some energy which is emitted from this it goes to, it can go this energy emitted it can excite a nearby electron in the same energy in another energy level and in this way the energy is absorbed we don't get any emission line so that forms actually a dark line in this absorption spectra but remember that if we have a absorption spectra on a photographic plate white photographic plate there will be a dark line this there will be dark lines like this and these dark lines are actually not completely dark completely black they are not completely black but only appear so because the contrast the white background and the black line so it appears a complete black but is not in actual so reason is that uh, if an atom is excited by absorbing radiation and uh, it absorbs this radiation at once once the atom absorbs the whole of the radiation but when these photons come back to the when these photons are coming out because an atom makes a transition back to the ground state so it will emit a photon but this photon does not come in the same direction in which it just makes an upward transition it can go in any random direction for example a photon is coming here it may not go directly back to this or it may not go like this it can go this photon can go in another direction for example it can go here 
it can go in this direction or it can go like this so there are some another energy levels here or there may be an another atom in the gas which will absorb this photon okay and when this photon is absorbed uh, it uh, there is a continuous beam actually of light so we may have different values of the energies which are then uh, emitted in the output spectra and in this way the energy does not the spectra does not look a very it is not actually completely dark or completely bright there is a diffusion in that spectra because of the not the same direction of the emitted photons because of their random direction and one more thing about absorption spectra is that you will not observe a balmer series balmer lines in the absorption spectrum of hydrogen that means no balmer lines will be in the absorption spectrum of the hydrogen atoms so we can remember that there is a statement we can make a statement that every line every line in the absorption spectra absorption spectra there is a corresponding line emission spectra of the substance but reverse is not true so for example if we observe an absorption spectra on some photographic plate so how you observe an absorption spectra we so we take see this if this is a band of absorption lines then there is some gap this is an absorption spectra there may be some absorption spectra here and corresponding if you take the emission spectra of this atom there may be a line corresponding to this absorption there will be a line in the emission spectra so that means this photograph plate may be a dark and you get a white line thus bright line so we get a bright line in the emission spectra in the absorption there will be a dark band because the light is absorbed and you are not getting anything in the output and here you are getting the photons which are coming in the emission spectra so their corresponds but in the reverse is not true some certain emission lines absorb appear in the absorption there are some emission lines which may absorb in the which may appear in the absorption spectra for example sir mujhe kya aa raha hai sama okay i will under make it understand i will give you an example let us suppose that atom is in its state n equal to 1 we have an atom which is in the state an electron is initially in its state n equal to 1 it is excited it is absorbs a radiation from external source when it is incident upon this atom and it can go to n greater than 1 so this is the absorption transition it can occur only from n equal to 1 to n is greater than 1 and when this happens this will give you a lyman series in the absorption spectra however in some cases for example for other series not in the lyman for when atom makes a transition not from n equal to 1 it makes a transition from n equal to 2 how is that possible this is possible in some cases for example this is possible in case of stars some stars certain stars and in absorption spectra balmer series is observed in that in some stars but it is fact due to the fact that some stars they are at very high temperatures of the order of 10 to the power 5 kelvin 
So when this much of temperature is there, that means a large amount of external energy is already there for atoms. And atoms remain in n equal to two state. So atoms remain in n equal to two state. When they remain in n equal to two state, this is the first excited state, then they can make transition to other and n equal to two, it can go to n equal to one. So when this happens, when n equal to one, you can have this. You can have again that Lyman series there. So what I am saying about for what um, this in this case you are not able to understand this. I will try again. I will try to again to make it understand that we have an absorption spectra for absorption. A photon is absorbed. And if you observe that you incident some light and you imagine a spectra in the output. So there is the dark bands are appearing. This is the absorption spectra. But there may be some liners here, which are white. Not white actually, these are bright. These are actually the emission lines, some emission lines. Not all emission lines are observed, but some of the emission lines are observed. And for the same atom, corresponding to these absorption liners, there will be an emission line. If you observe the emission spectra of that, so there will be a line. Absorption occurs from n equal to one, but emission will occur only when atom is in n equal to two state. So whenever there is an absorption, there is there will be an emission. So that is what it is saying that every absorption line, absorption spectra, there is corresponding line in the emission spectrum of the substance. Then there is a one more concept that is called as resonance line. Sir, this is a definition, resonance line, a simple definition. I will end up with here. I will end up here. Okay, sir. Okay. Resonance line is actually, for example, an atom is in the ground state. An atom is in the ground state and it is excited to higher state by applying a monochromatic radiation. Now it can fall directly back to the ground state or when it passes through other lower states. It may go like it can absorb to go another state and fall first here. It lose some energy and then falls it up, then again lose some energy. So we may not have new dash not equal to new in this case. For example, in this case, when we there's absorption from one level to the higher energy level, transition. So there is, if we have incident a frequency, uh, this radiation of frequency new, and in the output, we are getting new dash, which is not equal to new. So that means there is a frequency which may be different from new, new actually, or there may be different frequencies, of which may be not greater than new. We can have new dash equal to, which is of course actually new dash is less than new, because there is some absorption by the energy and energy level because of the presence of another energy level. And substance gives an emission line of some frequency as absorber. There are other smaller frequencies because of the presence of other energy levels there. This is called a fluorescence actually. When you have variation change in the output frequencies with respect to the input frequency. But if hydrogen gas is now excited by shining a monochromatic radiation, uh, which corresponds to first line of the Lyman series. That means we are going from n equal to one to n equal to two. This is the first line of the Lyman series from n equal to one to n equal to two. There will be then from because when n equal to two, we have an n i equal to then two and it comes back to n f that back to the one. This is n equal to two, n equal to one. So if it goes directly here, there's only one way out of that is coming back to this state. 
So whatever the energy it has absorbed here, it has emitted here. And here H nu is equal to H nu dash. When this case is there, <clears throat> this is called a resonance. The line, this line will be resonance line. That means the first uh, line of Lyman series is the resonance line of the hydrogen. First line of Lyman series is the resonance line of hydrogen. The resonance occurs when there is emission and absorption frequencies are same. That is only case when n equal to one, transition is from one to two, and back from two to one. That is only possibility in the case of resonance line. And always the part of the Lyman series, first line is a resonance line. That is of the longest wavelength because energy will be small for n equal to one to n equal to two. Okay, I will end up here. And I was not able to upload the lectures actually because poor internet connection. I will try again today and I will upload them. I will try to upload and I will send you these notes also.